Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. And I know I've done this one before, but I love it so much. So I thought we ought to revisit it again, you know. Okay, so here we go. We have indefinite integral of sine inverse of x quantity squared dx. So go ahead, pause the video on your own if you want to try it first. I'm going to jump right in using good old integration by parts, which is the first thing that jumps to my mind because we have an inverse trig function. So how to choose u and dv, you really don't have a lot of options because whatever the inverse trig function is, typically we need to let that be u. And since it's squared, all of that's gonna be u. So we're gonna let u be sine inverse of x quantity squared, and then dv is just plain old dx. Now here, please be careful when you find du, don't forget to apply the chain rule correctly. So differentiating sine inverse of x squared, you bring the two down front, leave the quantity inside alone, subtract one from the exponent, so the new exponent is one. And then now we're gonna multiply by the derivative of the function on the inside, which is sine inverse of x. So its derivative is one over square root one minus x squared, and then I just need to add dx, good? Okay, finding v is much simpler. Antiderivative of dx is just x. Perfect, so now let's use our biparts formula and see what we've got going on. Remember we have u times v, so that'll be x times sine inverse of x squared minus, minus the integral of v du. So I'm going to put the two outside the integral sign and then let's write it nicely so it doesn't look like a disaster. I'll put x sine inverse of x up top with dx and then the rad one minus x squared in the bottom. So x sine inverse of x over rad one minus x squared dx. Good? Okay, so now our task is to find the antiderivative of this term here. And again, as soon as I see an inverse trig function, I'm thinking to myself, we probably need to use integration by parts. Straight up u sub would not work here, sadly, because of this x. If this x wasn't here, then we'd be done in just a couple moments, right? But that's complicating things. So let's proceed with another round. I have to call my variable something a wee bit different though. So I'll say u bar this time is, let it just be the inverse trig part, sine inverse of x and then dv bar can be the rest. So what's the rest? I've got an x, I've got a dx, and I've got a rad one minus x squared in the bottom. So all of that is dv bar. x over rad one minus x squared dx, good? Okay, so now let's find du bar. That part's not too difficult. It's gonna be one over square root one minus x squared dx. Now V bar might be a little bit more involved. Depending where you are in your math career, you could, might be able to do this in your head and it's no big deal. If not, I'll work it through for you. We're just gonna take a little aside moment, okay? A little aside moment. In order to find V bar, I need the antiderivative, or basically let me write out and find the integral of x over the square root of one minus x squared dx. Now hopefully you can see just a substitution will help us evaluate this antiderivative. I've already used up u though, so let's be precise. I'm gonna let t pick some other variable be the quantity just one minus x squared. And this is perfect because then dt is negative two x dx. And hopefully you see we pretty much have that in the numerator. So if I divide by negative two, now I have negative one half dt is x dx, which is sitting right here, fabulous, we love it. And now I can write this as negative one half integral dt over square root of t. Are we all right? Okay, good. And then now to find the antiderivative, this is negative one half integral t to the negative one half dt. Add one to the exponent, it'll be t to the positive one half. Divide by the new exponent, I multiply by two, and then we'll put plus C, but you know what? I wanna save C for the grand finale, so I'll say plus D. So this ends up being negative T to the one half or square root of T, and who was T? T was one minus X squared plus D. Okay, so basically we don't need the plus D, but I'm going to replace 
my v bar with negative square root 1 minus x squared right here. Negative square root 1 minus x squared. Are we all right? Okay, good. Now, let me copy down what we've done from earlier. That way we can reference it as we finish off the problem. Beautiful. Okay, so now what do we have? Don't forget this cute little x sine inverse of x squared sitting out front. Write the whole problem as you go, all right? Minus 2, and I'll distribute that in just a moment. Don't worry. Again, now we have u bar v bar. So I'll put negative sine inverse of x square root 1 minus x squared minus integral. And this time we have du bar v bar. Well, see how there's another minus sign right here? So that'll switch this to be plus. And then look at, this is so lovely. So v bar is square root one minus x squared. du bar is one over square root one minus x squared. And then I have dx. Oh, from here, it's smooth sailing. Are you excited? Yes, yes, we are, Professor V. Oh, good. So this is x sine inverse of x squared. Let's distribute that negative 2 plus 2 sine inverse of x square root 1 minus x squared minus 2 times the integral of just 1 dx. We're nearly there. x sine inverse of x squared plus 2 sine inverse of x square root 1 minus x squared minus antiderivatives just going to give me an x and now we could put plus c because I saved it. That's why I didn't want to use it earlier so we could just finish nice and clean and crisp. Lovely. What a job well done. Did you arrive at the same conclusion? Did you take a different path to get here? I don't think there's too too many options but I'm curious to see if you did something different. Also you know, I think I've done this one before maybe years ago on this channel. I just love it. I love it so much. Maybe I ought to put it on my Calc 2 exam in the fall. I'm teaching Calc 2 in the fall. Not in the summer. Right now I have a Calc 3 class. So anyways, comment. Let me know how you solved it, how you tackled this problem. And also, did you need to do that T sub or were you able to just find the antiderivative mentally? That's great as well. In fact, if you're going to have to go on and take Calc 3 differential equations, if you can do those kinds of U subs in your head, that's, that's the best. And don't forget, if you need to review your integration techniques, check out my playlist. I have video lectures for Calc 1, 2, 3, and so much more, all organized. And you can brush up integration by parts, trig sub, whatnot. All right, thanks so much for your support. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math.